Hey guys, Brad Halleck from BH Cosplay. I wanted to make a quick video uh, about this uh, cool chainmail technique. I posted a video earlier from another guy who developed this cool system that made making chainmail a lot easier. But essentially what it is, instead of using links, instead of using the circles, he created this pattern, kind of this S pattern that goes back and forth, uh, that you can then interlock these pieces together to make yourself some chain mail. And it, uh, I think it looks really good. Uh, it, it looks great. Uh, and so I used three different techniques to make this chain mail and I'll explain to you what I did real quick and uh, kind of give you my pros and cons. So the first one I did was I essentially just 3D printed the file. And uh, this is about the, this is the longest I can make it in my 3D printer. It's about 12 inches long. I use just a standard PLA. So uh, this is just PLA uh, filament. The downside of this is it's really rigid. So when you're trying to weave it together, it's a bit of a nightmare. So I was able to weave all this together. Um, it took me a pretty decent amount of time just because it's so hard to get the pieces interlocked because you have to actually push them inside of the corresponding loop. Uh, and this stuff, while it is a little bit flexible, it's not very flexible at all. Uh, I basically got hand cramps putting this together. Uh, but as you can see, this is what it looks like. Um, the other problem I ran into is because of stress, there's a couple of spots where they actually broke uh, and they can be glued back together. That's no problem. But uh, again, this doing it out of PLA was a, a big problem. I noticed what he did is he... Uh, made them out of uh, foam. He used this laser cutter. Well, I don't have a laser cutter, but I do have a silhouette uh, vinyl cutter. So what I did is, uh, is I essentially copied the design of this and I did it in, uh, and then I put it in my silhouette so that I could make foam pieces of this. So my silhouette cut out these little pieces. And as you can see, I mean, it's foam, so it's super stretchy uh, and it's two millimeter foam. I cut those out. And then I did it on a 24 inch sheet. So I was able to pretty quickly and easily make this fairly large section of foam chain mail. Now it's super lightweight. So that's one of the huge benefits of this. Um, the, the, the downside is, is because it is foam, it's a little bit more fragile. So you have to be careful with that. When you make this chain mail, it actually wants to curve around itself like this. So uh, when, Part of the process is actually putting it in the oven or using a heat gun and then putting weight across it to uh, to flatten it out. So, and that again shows in the video that he made about his uh, chain mail. So with the foam, when you do that process, use a heat gun and then I just use my three, two, one blocks and use the heat gun. I use the heat gun on it and then just worked these three, two, one blocks kind of down the path to flatten them out. You can also use use like a baking sheet and use that. So anyway, once I did that with the foam, I'm pretty happy with the results, but it did kind of flatten it out a little bit. And you can also see that, again, because it's foam, uh, there is a little bit of distortion that happens. For instance, like in this area right here, you can see there's some distortion in the chain mail. Some of it looks a little flatter than other spots. Uh, and, uh, but still for the process, I'm pretty happy with the results. What I ended up using that I like the best, I purchased a flexible filament called TPU. Uh, and this is, uh, I just used it in my Prusa printer. Uh, it works the same. Uh, I do a little research on it. I saw some suggestions in the comments in uh, on Amazon that suggested printing at a little bit slower speed. So instead of, for my Prusa, instead of printing at 100%, I printed at 80% speed, which seemed to work out really great. And it also has some adherence issues. So I use the standard technique, which I always use, which is spraying a little Aquanet hairspray on my print bed. And I've had zero problems with it sticking. Um, and it feeds just fine. The benefit of it is this TPU is incredibly flexible. So it keeps its flex, okay? As opposed to the PLA, super rigid, okay? I can't do the same thing with that. This is me bending it. That's about as far as it'll go without feeling some tension. The 
TPU, you know, I can basically kind of wad it up, but then it returns to its natural shape. So the TPU was way better for the weaving process because obviously you can compress these pieces just like that, slide them right through the next piece, and then the weave is much easier. So uh, this piece of chain mail, if I had done this using the links, probably would have taken me about three hours. Um, I was able to weave this together in about two minutes. So that is the huge benefit of using this different type. And as you can see, it looks like chainmail. It has a, a definite look. If you look at it super close, you can see that it is not actual rings. But again, from a distance, when this is on your armor, uh, this is gonna look great. Now this is, I just printed this in black and I will paint it silver to give it more of a realistic chainmail look. But overall, super happy with the results of using a flexible filament printed and then woven together. So this is what I'm gonna go with. Uh, I do like the lightweightness. If you're gonna do a ton of it, it might be a good idea if you have a, a, a cutter, a vinyl cutter to do it this way. But I just, I really honestly prefer the look. If you look at them side by side, um, I, I just kind of like the look of the 3D printed one much better than the look of the foam. So uh, anyway, I hope this helped you out and uh, Get out there and make yourself some chainmail armor.